Hello everyone, this is Lerone Koontz. I'm back on the stoop. It's good to see y'all. Good to be back in Brooklyn. Um, today I want to talk about a case that's very interesting to me. It's the case of Donald Trump and Fannie Willis. Um, the prosecution of Donald Trump in Georgia by the DA Fannie Willis. Um, she's charging Trump and 18 others with RICO charges saying they conspired to overthrow the election results in Georgia. Um, the reason why this interests me is because um, when I'm not here in, a, in Brooklyn, I'm in Atlanta. And I live in Fulton County in Atlanta when I'm in Atlanta. You know, I have a home here in Brooklyn. I have a home in Atlanta. And um, so I kind of understand the politics in Atlanta not a lot you know it's a lot that I don't know about Atlanta even though I've owned a home there for like 15 years I still have to use a GPS to get around because um it's a very interesting place and one thing that I've learned about Atlanta is that um the people are great um the schools are great a lot of them there's a lot of great schools there and when it comes to politics the people are very loyal to their candidates. And if you're an elected official in Atlanta, like most places, but particularly I find in Atlanta, is that if the people are for you, they will leave you in that position forever. You know, you really don't have to worry about being voted out. You don't really worry to have to worry about being challenged. You can be challenged, but you don't have to worry about losing because people are very loyal. People in Atlanta, if they're for you, they're for you. If they support you, they support you. If you're trying to do something and they are for you and they like what you're trying to do, they will support you. They will get others to support you. They're very kind, generous, and supportive people in Atlanta. So as it relates to this Fannie Willis situation, um, as I said, a politician can stay in their position indefinitely. Usually politicians in Atlanta, from what I've been able to see, they'll stay in their position until they retire. Or if they want to move up to a higher position, they'll relinquish their position and then they'll move up to the higher position. The other way that people lose their positions politically in Atlanta is if they steal money. If they steal money or is if there's any indication that they've stolen money or done something with the finances that is a almost an automatic out in Atlanta people do not tolerate malfeasance too readily in Atlanta I've noticed that now Fannie Willis who is the DA of Fulton County where I own a home at um, she replaced or she won the election against her predecessor, who was Paul Howard. Paul Howard Jr., he had been the DA for over 20 years. He had won that position six times. And um, he, and, and nobody bats an eye, you know, for him to stay in that position in Atlanta, that is not unusual for somebody to stay in a position that long. So for 23 or four years, he was the DA of Fulton County. Now, the only reason why he lost that position is because he was accused of stealing money. Okay? He went to the city council and asked for a raise. They said no. He was already making $175,000. He wanted a raise. They said no. But what they did do, he had a nonprofit. They donated $250,000 to his, mouth, his um, nonprofit. Excuse me. He took about $195,000 of that $250,000 and he put it in his own bank account. And people in Atlanta did not like that. They felt that that money should go to his charity and he should be doing some um, good work with that money. But as far as him depositing it in his account and spending it, they didn't, they didn't go for that. And plus, he was, he was also accused of sexual harassment. So that led to him 
being vulnerable. And Fannie Willis, she's a very astute lawyer in Atlanta. And of course, she used to work under him, like most lawyers probably in Fulton County, they probably all worked under um, Howard, Paul Howard, because he had been there for 20 some odd years. So all the new lawyers, you know, in the last 20 years probably worked for the DA's office at some point in time. So they all know the, you know, the DA. And she saw that he was vulnerable and she said, hey, I'm going to take his seat, which is no problem at all. So she ran um, saying that she wouldn't have these types of problems with the money. And she also went on record about sexual harassment and, and you know, um, relationships in the working place, saying that she would never date someone that works for her and things like that, which was all good. You know, I get that. So um, it is saddening to me if young women felt like they came to work and they were one, even judged for being a woman, but two, if certainly they felt uncomfortable within the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, that will not be something that is allowed on my watch. Um, supervisors under my leadership that are not encouraging and building up my staff will not be supervisors long in my administration. And um, I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, you know, we are at a place in society where things happen in people's relationships, husband and wife, sometimes there are outside relationships. I don't think that that's what the community is concerned about, although there, you know, there might be a, a moral breaking in that. I think that what citizens are really, really concerned about is if you chose to have inappropriate contact with employees. I mean, there's nothing that I can say on it other than it is distracting. Um, it is certainly inappropriate for the number one law enforcement officer in the state. Um, and it just, it, it really, really saddens me. And it will be very unfortunate if the taxpayers of this community have to pay for any of those lawsuits. So the people of Atlanta elected Fannie Willis as the DA. She took over and um, she has been doing some She's been doing a lot of work. She charged, like I said, Trump and 18 others with election interference. She charged them with a, which is a racketeering charge, a RICO case. She also charged the rapper Young Thug and the YSL group or gang with RICO charges. So there's, there's a bunch of them on trial. And, you know, just the regular things that DAs have to do in prosecuting crime and stuff like that, she's doing it. And, um, she, when she, you know, when she first got elected, she would go before the city council and I guess the board of commissioners in Atlanta and Georgia and ask for more money. She's like, we need more money. I, there's a lot of things that need to be done. There's a lot of cases that need to be prosecuted. I need money to do this. You know, I don't have enough attorneys and I need to hire people. And, um, you know, I'm listening to her. I see her on the news and stuff and she's at these meetings and stuff and she's making her case and I'm saying she's she's pretty you know she's pretty good um so she eventually got the money to I guess prosecute these cases and one of the cases is the Trump case the um, RICO case against Trump and 18 other people which is cool for most people in Atlanta maybe she would have a problem if she was just doing it in some other place in Georgia that's pro-Trump but in Atlanta there's no political fallout for prosecuting Trump. Matter of fact, it is probably a benefit for her to go after Trump. So I see why she did that politically. And if she has some hard evidence, then she should definitely prosecute him. Her problem comes in now because she has been involved in a divorce proceeding of a lawyer that she hired to work on that Trump RICO case. The lawyer's name is Nathan Wade. Now, it's not unusual as far as I've been able to ascertain. It's not unusual for a lawyer to hire outside um, attorneys, outside counsel to prosecute cases. And so that's not a problem. The problem is the guy that she hired she is in a romantic relationship with and she gave him you know a contract with the DA's office now on the surface that doesn't seem like an issue you know you can date who you want 
But it kind of goes against what she said, that she would never date someone that works for her. And um, I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. <laughs> Let me just say that. This guy technically is working for her, and she's dating him. Okay. What happens now, what, what is complicated now about this case is that she not only hired him, but she's paying him $650,000. She has paid him out of the money that she needs, she, she's gotten to run her DA's office. She has paid him $650,000 since 2021. Since August of 2021 is when he got signed to um, the DA's office. And the day he signed the contract to be on this case, he also, the next day, the following day, he put in his divorce papers for his wife of 24 years. So he was married, or he is married, but the day he signed this deal with the DA, who he's dating, he filed for divorce. And his wife is a stay-at-home mother or a stay-at-home wife, homemaker. And he divorced her. Now, that in and of itself is not a big issue. Those things happen. People divorce one another. But the issue now becomes, okay, you hired this guy for $650,000 and you're dating him. And now they're finding records that say that he's spending money on her. Um, now, that may not be an issue, but for the wife, that is an issue because she's in divorce proceedings and she's trying to ascertain the money that, sh that he has in order for them to come to some settlement. So she, he has her lawyers in court, he has his lawyers in court, and she's trying to get information about what accounts he has, what type of money he earns, so they can come to a settlement about the divorce. Well, the husband, Nathan Wayne, Nathan, Nathan Wade, is not disclosing what he has. He's not disclosing his financials, his tax records, his bank account records, his credit card records. He's not disclosing any of those things. And he um, is now, or has been since, I think, August in contempt of court because he has not produced these records that the court wants to see. So the wife is saying, you know, we got to get these records because he is making money and um, we have to get this settled before we have this divorce decree, which is reasonable. I mean, that's a reasonable thing to want to know. And why he doesn't want to turn it over, I don't know. But you know, she says she says she has some of his credit card statements and she has produced those statements and she's shown that he has been going on elaborate trips. He has been flying first class, going to Napa Valley, California, San Diego. He's been on cruises um, with Royal Caribbean and Norwegian cruise. He's been to Aruba. And guess what? He's been on these trips with the DA, Fannie Willis, as his mistress, because he's technically still married. So he's footing the bill. They have 1-800-Flower um, gifts that the wife is saying that he's given her, like all this money that he's given her. And he has only given the wife $700 bi-weekly. Every two weeks she gets $700 and she's saying that even that money that goes into that account for her, he is using money from that account as well. So she is trying to get some sort of resolution. And I guess being that he's not producing any records, I guess her and her attorneys feel like, hey, we got to make this thing public. We have to let people know um, what's happening so we can get some resolution here. Um, so that's why we know about this is because they made it public. And of course, the people that are being um, prosecuted by Fannie Willis in this RICO case, they want this information because they want to have the case thrown out because they want to say that there's a conflict of interest between the DA and the person that she hired to prosecute the RICO case, um, independent prosecutor, or there's some sort of term that I'm not clear on right now, but 
he has been hired as the lead attorney to prosecute Trump. So they're trying to say there's a conflict, conflict of interest going there. But the wife is, is pushing this thing. And um, I understand why. It makes perfect sense if I'm, you know, in her shoes. Hey, you need to know how much this guy's making. They say that he made over $700,000 during the period that she's asking about the money. And he's only given her $1,400 a month. So it's very um, sticky situation for Fannie Willis. Now, she has been feeling the heat for a while because people have been asking her, you know, what's going on here? Um, is this all true? And she hasn't made a comment. So it got to the point where the wife and her attorney said, you know what, we need to subpoena Fannie Willis. Have her come in and have her explain the money that is being spent by her husband on Fannie Willis. So now it becomes even a bigger story in the news. And so Fannie Willis realizes that she cannot just sweep this under the rug. She has to make a statement. So she comes out and she goes to her church, Big Bethel AME Church in Georgia, and talks about this and says that it's racial. It's a black woman, DA, and the only reason why they're coming at her is because she's a black woman and the guy that she's dating is a black man. You know, and I find it kind of odd for her to be dating a married man and going on trips with them, going on trips with him and be able to come to the pulpit of a church and like talk about it. I mean, I guess it's, it's OK, but I'm just saying it's like that's not the type of thing that the church is, church is going to celebrate the fact that you're um, dealing with a married man. It may have been the reason why this man filed his divorce because, you know, you're, you're, you're paying this money. Now, the question is, is she getting some sort of kickback because she paid him all this money? But let me just back up. Now, when she makes her speech at her church, she says, this is, you know, um, racism, right? And she says, I hired three attorneys. I hired a white lady, I hired a white man, and I hired a black man, Nathan Wade. And they're only concerned about him because he's black and because I'm black, but they're not saying anything about the white attorneys that I hired. They're, all these attorneys are very capable, and there's no reason why anybody should be disputing that the fact that I hired them, right? And she goes on to say, and I paid them all the same money. You know, I hired them and I paid them identically and there should be no no issue. But um, records has shown that she has not paid them equally because um, the contracts that she signed with these three lawyers are different. The the black, the white woman that she signed the contract with the lawyer she pays him she pays her $150,000 an hour the white man that she signed the contract with she pays him $200,000 an hour and the black guy Nathan Wade the person in question her her lover or her um, potential lover or whatever type of situation they got going on she pays him $250,000 an hour. And not only that, now the white man that she is paying $200 an hour is known by in legal circles as being an expert on RICO cases. He's like the premier expert in that area on RICO cases. He's prosecuted plenty of felonies. He's prosecuted a, you know, RICO cases before. So he's considered a very competent person and it's a person that you probably would want to get on your team if you are prosecuting a RICO case. The woman also is an attorney that has a reputation of prosecuting felonies. It appears though that the gentleman that she's dating, Nathan Wade, doesn't have that same background that he is not really known for prosecuting felonies 
and he was a judge for 10 years, but I'm hearing that he was a traffic court judge or something of that nature. He's never prosecuted a RICO case at all, yet he has the more lucrative contract of on um, this RICO case. So that on in and of itself is kind of suspicious or it may um, generate some interest in how that came to be. Hello, hello. Can you keep going? Thank you. I'm recording, but it's okay. It's all good. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Um, where was I? It's young people. I love them, but hey, they knew better. Anyway, um, he has not prosecuted any RICO cases, has no experience prosecuting RICO cases, and the word on the street is that he doesn't even really prosecute felonies at all. Yet he got this $650,000 contract. Now, this is very interesting and very um, unusual in Atlanta because the average DA in Atlanta makes between um, $75,000 and $120,000 a year. Um, I went online and I saw that they're looking for, they have openings in the DA, hey brother, they have openings in the DA's office and they are offering $77,000 to $120,000 for assistant district attorney positions in that office in Fulton County. Yet this one individual was paid $650,000. You could have you hired five attorneys for that type of money. And um, so people are looking at that very um, suspiciously. They're saying that this something's going on here. The fact that she gave this guy who is not really qualified as a RICO racketeering um, attorney, the fact that she gave him a contract and he has been able to generate $650,000 on this contract and he's dating her and he's spending money on her sending taking her on elaborate trips to Aruba and on cruises and going to Napa Valley and all these different places with her it kind of it kind of feels like it was quid pro quo or some sort of kickback going on like hey I'll give you this contract you got to divorce your wife and you got to use that money to you know pay for the things that we're going to do together and you know your wife is going to be left out in the cold and all of this so it doesn't sound good i don't know whether this is going to affect the rico case excuse me i don't think it should because if the evidence is there about some sort of um conspiracy to overthrow the election then the, the evidence is going to speak for itself so it shouldn't impact that that much it might delay it because you know she may have to recuse herself the the guy who is you know she hired nathan wade may have to recuse himself so that'll set the case back but it shouldn't affect the evidence of the case and it shouldn't you know really impact whether this case is going to go forward or not but the the more immediate issue for fanny willis is that she just won her election in 2020. Now, she could have rocked this position for the next 20, 25 years, the same way her predecessor, Paul Howard, did. But she got involved in this scandal. And like I said before, people in Atlanta do not tolerate you messing with their money. That's one thing they will not tolerate. And she's up for re-election in 2024, this year. She's up for re-election. And she, of course, now she's a national personality since she's prosecuting Trump. And that, that may have been her goal to just um, up her profile and maybe aspire to becoming, you know, a senator or maybe the mayor of Atlanta or maybe the governor of Georgia or maybe, you know, be considered for vice president or president at some point in her career if she gets this right. Um, but it seems to be backfiring on her because of this scandal and the people of Fulton County, which I know and love and consider myself one of, 
and I know that they do not like you tampering with their funds. They don't understand why you're paying one guy $650,000, why you got attorneys that are working for the DA's office making $120,000 a year. I'm sure the DAs that work for Fannie Willis in the DA's office are saying to themselves, hey, I'm over here slaving, I'm doing all this work, and I'm making $120,000 a year or $100,000 a year. And this guy who doesn't even work for the office that is um, Fannie Willis's boyfriend, he's, he's getting $650,000. He's getting $650,000. Come on. Come on. And they're saying, we're doing all this work. We need other attorneys here. And she's giving this guy all the money. So it doesn't look good. So her career may be over in November. I'm just waiting for someone, maybe some other attorney that works in that DA's office to run against her. She's very vulnerable right now. There's a lot of prominent attorneys in Atlanta. There's a lot of prominent black attorneys in Atlanta. There's a lot of black women attorneys in Atlanta. And she is ripe for the picking. I tell you, she was only there for four years, but that might be four and done. She should have just chilled and not done this deal with her boyfriend and rock the position until she was ready to move up or stay there for 20 years like Paul Howard did. But we'll see what's going to happen. And that's why this is interesting to me, because I'm, you know, I, I have a home in Fulton County when I'm not here. I'm there most of the time. So, you know, I kind of know what's happening on the ground. And I just wanted to bring that to y'all. So that's what it is. And I'm going to, you know, keep up with it. And thanks for tuning in, checking me out. And until next time, as always, peace and stay safe.